So let's just go do a, a real quick demo here. All right, switch over to Visual Studio, and I want to show you a couple of key points about uh, the thread class. Okay, so here's Visual Studio uh, 2012, um, but you could just as well do this in Visual Studio 2010. There's no reason you can't. It's just uh, you know .NET 4 stuff. All right, so the first thing I want to do is just write a sort of a simple parallel program. Imagine that we've got um, something like uh, a travel website like Expedia, and a request is going to come into our site to our system, and it's you know, we're going to have a couple of different things we want to do. Somebody's going to say, I'm booking a vacation, so they're going to want to book a hotel, a plane, and a rental car all at the same time. But you can bet that the rental car company doesn't care what the airline does, right? These systems are 100% independent, so we should be able to parallelize them. You know, book the car and the hotel and the plane all at the same time. So we're going to use the task class to do that. All right. So let's just uh, do a, a quick bit of coding here. So we'll say book car, and let's suppose this returns an int um, ID, let's call it car ID equals that, really quick. And then we can do this little trick. We can hit uh, control period in Visual Studio, and it'll actually write the function for us. So let's do that for hotel, Oops. hotel ID here. And we'll do the same thing for uh, what's left, the plane. Okay. Plane. So we'll let Visual Studio write those three functions. Now, you, as you can imagine, not implemented is probably not what we want to do. We're not really going to call some web services just to keep things simple. We're just going to make the, the system run a little bit slower just to simulate a web service. But let's do this. Let's say console write line um, booking plane dot dot dot. In the bottom, we can say uh, done with plane. And let's go ahead and also create a static random. And, whoops, just to uh, simulate uh, some sort of ID or something. So we'll say return rand.next of 100. All right, so there's a sort of a fake web service call. And let's pretend that this takes a little while. So instead of doing real work, I'm just going to say thread.sleep. And for the plane, let's say the plane takes 5,000 uh, 5, milliseconds, 5 seconds. For the hotel, let's say this is going to take 8. And better put the right words here. Hotel, hotel. And then lastly, for the car, let's say that it takes only three seconds. Okay, and also let's time this. So we'll create a stopwatch class. We'll say um, stopwatch, we gotta import that namespace. SW equals stopwatch dot start new. And the bottom we'll just say something like console write line finished in probably zero uh, seconds. And we'll just say stopwatch dot elapsed milliseconds. Turn those into seconds. Divide by a thousand. Okay, we're not doing anything with the IDs yet. We'll we'll figure that out in a little bit. Okay, so if I run this, it shouldn't surprise you. There's no threading going on. It just books a car, which takes five seconds. It books a hotel, which takes eight seconds. And we wait. And then finally, it books the plane, which takes five seconds or three seconds. I think the car was three seconds. Yep, so the total time it takes, of course, is the sum of all the parts, right? But because the car has nothing to do with the hotel, which has nothing to do with the plane, we should be able to do these all at the same time. So let's convert this to use tasks. So I'll do this here, comment this out, and I'll say this is the serial way. And so when you guys get this uh, code, which of course I will give to you, um, you can you can see all the different ways. So we'll see this in a, a couple of ways here. So instead of doing this, let's actually create some tasks. So I can say, um, I can say uh, task. Now because this, what the result of this booking a car is an integer, we can actually say we want to create a task of int. And that will store the return value, which will be the car ID. Okay, and you can see that that's coming from system.threading.tasks.task, which is a different namespace than the old one. So we got to import that at the top. All right, we'll call this car task equals, 
And then kind of like our stopwatch here, there's a factory way to create these that are that's a little simpler if you want to create and start them at the same time. So I could say task.factory.startnew um, of int and give it the book car like that. And then you just give it the function to call. We could do the same thing for the hotel. Make sure I get these all fixed for you. Okay, and then let's do one for the plane. Okay, so you guys might be thinking, all right, excellent. We're going to be able to do all these at the same time. We have these three separate tasks. They're going to run, and it should take the, not the sum of the pieces, right? Not 16 seconds, but it should take just the longest one. We only need to wait until the longest one is done. The other should already be done since they're all happening at the same time. But it turns out that there's a feature of the task in that... Um, that you'll see here in a second. So let me go ahead and just run it, and you might be surprised how quick we can get this to go. Okay, so in two milliseconds, we finished booking the car in the hotel. All right, so what happened? Well, it turns out that these, these threads that are created here, these all create threads, they come out of the thread pool. And the thread pool threads are what are called background threads, and they don't keep the main process alive. So if, if the main thread exits, then these background threads are aborted. And you can see that here, that we were booking the car in the hotel, and whoa, those never finished, but we still exited. So the thing with task is, you have to wait for them to finish, okay? So there's two ways we can wait. We could say um, task.waitall, oops, not win any, win all, but wait all, the win all is the new version. We say car task, hotel task, plane task, and just like that, okay? So that's one way to do it, and that's something you'll do a lot of time if you have a void void piece. So here you can see now we're waiting for them to finish, and they should finish in order of however short they are, like the shortest one first and the slowest one last. So you can see that um, they did finish in the same order. Let me see if I can run them in a different order, because I wrote them in slowest order. So let's run the hotel first and then the car. You should still see the car finished first. All right, so car is the shortest. It was three seconds. The plane was uh, five seconds, and the hotel was eight seconds. So, right, they just finished in whichever order they are. They take. Wait. Let's put hotel last, actually. Or, sorry. Put it like this. Yeah, I guess they all just start at the same time. Sorry. It's just random. Oh, there we go. All right. Finally got the plane and the hotel to switch places. But you can see it's taking eight seconds. And the reason it takes eight seconds is that's the longest task. Okay? So this is an interesting way to wait for them. We could do this. But we could also do this. We could say console right line, finished booking, um, car ID, keep writing card, car ID equals curly zero, uh, hotel ID equals curly one, and plane ID, right? These are like your confirmation numbers or whatever that you would get. And I could just do this. I could say car task dot result. And that's that integer that was returned because we have a task of int. This is sort of the return value here. So we could also say uh, hotel task dot result and plane task dot result. Okay? And what will happen is we're going to run through these, start them off straight away, and then we're going to get and try to write out this line, but we're going to, the uh, runtime will try to access the value of result, but result is not available. So it's just going to do exactly the same thing as waiting. It's going to wait until the car is done, and then it's going to go and try to access the value of hotel task.result. It's going to wait until that's done, and then same thing for plane. So we don't actually need to wait if we're accessing all the values. Okay, so you can see it didn't just run to the end. It's waiting. We're waiting for the car to be done, then the plane, then the hotel. All right, and then we get these IDs back. And I forgot an equal sign, but you get the point, right? Okay, so that's almost enough foundational stuff on tasks. There's just one more thing. What if I wanted to do something like this? What if I wanted to say, when the hotel is done, I need to go do additional booking? Like, I need to, you know, make sure I, I set some preferences, like... 
maybe you've set up in, in my Expedia type of website that you always like a, uh, a room with a great view. And so we could say, set up something that after the booking is made, we could go back and you know send something to the hotel. So if we wanted to do that, we could say hotel task dot continue with. And we can chain additional tasks into it. And you'll see that the C-sharp 5 compiler does all sorts of magic with this concept of continuing with additional pieces of work. Okay, so let's say task, this can be just a void task here. We'll say hotel um, follow-up task equals continue with. And what we do is we give it a delegate of some sort. And probably the most natural thing to do is to just give it... Um, uh, probably uh, just a, a lambda expression. So what I can go down here is I can say what's always passed into continue with is the previous task. So basically hotel task will be passed in. So we'll say task prev goes to and what are we going to do? Well we got to do something with it. So we'll say console write line um, adding um, view note for booking curly zero comma task previous oops task previous dot id okay and now we should probably wait if you have just one task you want to wait on you can wait this way so what's going to happen is this is going to run it's going to take five seconds or however many it takes and then when it's done it's going to turn around and run this task we don't have to wait for the hotel task because this one the second task won't be finished until both itself and the hotel tasks are done. Okay, so we can just do this wait here. All right, so let me just run it, and you guys should see that working well. And then we'll switch over and talk about C-sharp 5. So, all right, we don't see that message that the we're setting the hotel, right? Okay, so we done with the hotel, then we added the, book, the note for the booking of 1, and you can see uh, hotel ID is 5. What did I do wrong here? Oh, I said ID. Whoops. Uh, result is what I wanted. So here, I'll run it one more time. All right, so this is probably a good place to stop and ask questions. Here you can see hotel booking 63, hotel ID is 63.